so hi welcome to this episode so here we'll, let's continue with our form the form we use to create the new post so i was supposed to code that form in the previous video but the fixing of the error actually was taking longer so and i didn't want to make the video too long knowing that this form is going to take us some time uh, because of the far the cover image upload here so this is a concept that could take us some time to explain so i would like you to pay attention take your time to go through throughout the video and really learn a, uh, something cool here so let's sign in as an admin so our admin is called jdo at gmail.com that's the email we use and then the password password so we said invalid credential so there's something wrong with our details j dot do all right so that was the password okay so once now we are in front of our form this is the actual work we're going to do today in this episode so we should be able to click here and then it will tell us okay all the fields are required because we cannot jump any field here if you leave it empty then once we fill everything with the right content we submit it should tell us yes a new article is successfully created so if you go back to content here over time once we program this we should be able to see now the article in this list so let's go back so we go to the dashboard so this is another challenge we can see that we don't have a link like dashboard here although i know that the link is available on the name here remember when we we're designing we said that we we'll make this one take us to the admin's dashboard so you can see so once that is we can go back to the dashboard here we can now go ahead and start programming so let's open up the file so that's the admin dashboard.php the form is located there admin dashboard.php so before we go ahead we need to prepare the form so by providing the various fields and their names so we have the field here which is type text title is title id is title but we did not set a name and the name is important for the form submission so we add the name attribute and we also name it title so for the except the same thing so we have the name here oh okay we already have the name i was confused with class and then so on so that's cool there's no need to add that here so we have name we have name we have name we have name so all is well so the next thing we need to look at is how the form is handled so as usual we will leave the admin underscore dashboard to handle the form so that's the same file, uh, for, uh, file the same file should be able to handle the form so by to do that we just leave the form action empty there's no need to add admin underscore dashboard dot php as the handler because it's the same file we're on the same file so you can leave it empty so once that done here right under under our condi under our condition we need to now handle the form remember here we had a condition here which says okay if the form is submitted and then there's some content is filled then let's go ahead and so on so we do that here so we do that here the same condition so if the form is submitted we can go ahead and do that you might be tempted to say else something like, let's say echo uh form not submitted so you might be tempted to think of something like that uh there's nothing wrong basically here uh the only thing we might notice is that at this point if you when you come on your dashboard without seeing anything automatically just get that error all the time so it is a problematic option so we don't need to add the else statement here so handle the new post form here so once the form is submitted let's say if we can echo something so i would rather var dump the content of the form so var dump and then i will say variable post because we are using the post method and everything the person would have submitted will be posted so let me save the new post and we see we have the title as name the except the cover image as a string the content and so on 
now before we move on forward before we move forward there's something we need to pay attention to the far type far is a special type input type which does not work if we did not specify on the form header that this form handles files by specifying a particular encoding type we call ink type attribute and you need to specify that okay this form is going to handle form data uh, it's multi-part multi-part so the form has multi-part form data so i guess so all right so we need to specify multi-part form data except the form data is dash data so by specifying this attribute we are now telling our form that okay this form actually has some files attached to it so there's a different way of handling such forms so let's go ahead and let me close this one and go back to our php section here on top of the file so we are saying okay if there's something submitted just display it so here we'll start from this first of all i would like to get get all the input right get all the inputs the first input like we see here is the title first input is the title let me do echo equals to and just leave it multiply several times and take the next one except title and the next one cover image uh -huh. then the last one which is the actual content great so what do we get so here it is a post so therefore we should be able to access the content to variable post so i would like to do some handling here so first of all i would like to make sure that if is set if that variable is set it exists and it is not empty so you could add this like is and not empty right empty and it is also not like an empty string so i could add that condition so let me make it to the next line like this so like this so if it is set then the string it is not empty and then they did not submit us a an empty string so if we trim it, we trim all the spaces around and then it is still not equals to an empty string, then it is a good input. So if it's said so so and all these conditions are satisfied, question mark, then the value of the post title should be this post title. And I would like to also filter it with HTML special cars or html entities so in our case we we'll use html special cars right and then we we'll get the string so if not colon if not so if not then we assign no to this variable so if this variable has no then it means there's a problem with the field so basically what i'm trying to do here is the same thing we did with the user login by checking these variables one by one so it is the same condition except this time whenever the field has issues which is it is not filled or there's no content instead of me uh, creating a narrow variable i rather assign no to that variable it means at some point i'm going to check if this variable is not no this one too is not no this one is not no this one is not no then the user filled all the form uh, all the fields otherwise there's a problem but that is just to show you a different way of doing it and here what i wrote here is what we call a ternary condition which basically means instead of you to write if condition and so on then we do we write whatever happens if the condition is satisfied we rather say okay if condition is satisfied colon 
do something do good right and if the else so in case the condition is not satisfied the whatever happens would make it here so in our case what i said is okay the variable titles value should be do good if this condition is satisfied so this is the do good part sorry yes it is the do good part so else in case that doesn't happen so then the no part is here so that's the ternary condition i used here to make this happen so the same thing is going to happen here we're going to take the same thing for the except and obviously we change this title into except like this so i will do the same thing spacing is not good All right. Okay, we we'll do the same thing here. Cover image. Yes, for at uh, this case, uh, in the, in this case, the cover image, since it is not plain text, we cannot do this. So for this variable, for now, we'll keep it null by default. Then we'll do the same thing for the text here. So content. The content is required. So HTML special cars and so on. For this one, I'm not tem I'm tempted to remove this because we are going to take text. Or let me just make it HTML entities. Entities. Good. So you can actually quickly google the difference between these two html special cars and the html entities and see what it is like so once we provide these conditions normally we should have our variables with their content if the form is filled otherwise we get no except the cover image and the reason is simple the cover image is not going to be accessible on the post variable rather on another global variable called file files so if we go if we do this right so once we actually change the form encoding type by making it multi-part form data so here is the form here the variable the form once it is submitted the cover image which is the input of type file this guy here will not actually be available on the post variable so let's look at it and see so here i will var dump again the global variable post and you will see what happens so i'll try to feel, refresh let me cancel content go back to dashboard then i'll fill the form Test article, some cool text. Then I will try to upload an image. So let me go to let's say pictures, and then find. I think we should go in our post. think that is available oh yes i could go back here so tutorials pbn images so we can go to our images pick an image just like that randomly and then for the content we could say the full content comes here so when i submit this form uh, it tells me the undefined variable post in line 31. So yes, let's look at that line 31. On which page? Admin dashboard. Of course, line 31. Oh yes, it is underscore post. So let me reload again. Yes, so it tells me the title except string some that is not good. 
but you can see the except yes so we can see the title we can see the except we can see the content but the cover image is not part of it so that's simply because we specify that it is a, a file type so that variable we cannot get it by doing the same thing we did here the content is not there it's not in the post global variable it's rather in the particular variable global variable called files so if i var dump reload like this and then submit so you can see that variable so let me display it well let me do echo and pre-format it with some html tag then i will also echo the post variable right under it underscore post and we'll see the difference so if i go back yes resubmit it so when i resubmit the form so remember the first data is for the files and then the second data is the post so once we or we have dump the post we can see the title the except the content but we can see the cover image and when we have dump the files global variable we can see the cover image and the cover image comes as a sub array to this array and the sub array contains this so it contains the name to the file the type of the file the temporal location of the file and if any error the error status here and the size of the file so this gives us a lot of information that will be used to now transfer the file to the website server so let's go ahead so already here we could get the data from these forms this data here from the post variable so how do we get the image so to do that what i would like us to do so basically we can access the image by we can access the image since it is an array to get this array which is which contains the image data we could just access this sub array files cover image so we could do it this way so if is set so if it is sub, it is created if the form was submitted if it is set far cover image yes we do that and we can get the far the cover image like this and otherwise we make it null. this is not the actual processing of the far image but we just want to have the variable cover image to contain all this array otherwise it will be null. so the cover image variable will contain all this sub array here because we access the global variable files index cover image which has the value of this array so we arrange all that variable that array content inside this cover image so if you want to access this data now we can access it from this variable cover image so for example we could, if you want the name the file name so we are going to say cover image name like this so it will give us this name so basically that's what we are going to do so in case the image was not submitted then this variable will rather have a no value so that's what we are doing here now after that we would like to have another function let me create a function upload upload image because it will process the image from checking most information around the image its type its sizes if whatever it is so we don't want to mix that here so we'll, that function will take the cover image or let's say the image array and it the type must be an array so normal situation if you are in php fully uh, typed php we have to specify that the type should be an array but for now we don't care so we want an image and then that function will process this image since we know it is an array we are going to submit so we can go ahead and start checking whatever we want so the first thing we like to find out is that if there's no error right if if uh, check upload error so if image 
right slash error remember that's the the array the uh, index we want to access the index of error if index error is equals to zero it is an integer so we can be specific i see now it has to be specifically an integer of value zero so if not that then there was no error else if there is an error we can return false all those that's all we want this function to do the only time the function can return something it is when the upload is complete so it will rather probably return the functions uh, the image's name or the image's new name otherwise it will just return false that will allow us to check here in this body here okay if the upload was successful so if the upload is different from zero then we can now process or proceed so if the image error is zero so there's no error we can go ahead next thing what do we want to check so maybe we could let check the type we want to, to be sure that the, it is image it is an image so we could go ahead and say here let's create some types uh, allowed types so we'll create an array and inside that array we'll enter the various types we want we want type img png comma rng jpg EJ, RNG, so image, so JPEG, JPG, uh, RMG, or uh, image of type Aviv, because I have an image Aviv like that, and I think that should be fine. We have PNG, JPEG, yes, that should be okay. So that's the types we want to have. Anything else of that type will not be accepted. We might not tell the user this is a problem, but we are going to just consider it that way. So if image type, that's, uh, the type is accessible from this uh, index type. So if image type is not in array, so we say if not is, if not in, if not in array because we have a function called in array so if the needle which is what we were looking for so if image type of index type so if the image of index type which is going to be a value like this so if this value not not so if this image type here yeah, which is image png not in array so in the array which array are we looking for the allowed types array so if it is not in that array so it is not part of this list of image types then we have a problem so but rather i will check if it is in so if it is not that's the else part then we also return false Remember, I said we want to keep this function very simple and minimalistic, just to prove the concept. So once that's done, we we might go on and check the type and so on. So if that is done, the next thing I would like us to do is probably change the image name, or let's let's just ignore that part for now. So the next thing, once it is done, we would like to move the image to the destination. So the destination in our case is the images folder. So once the image upload is well, we will now move it to the images folder. So we'll do move upload file. So the file actual the actual file we are going to move. And then where do we want to move it? So we want to move it into the folder called images. And what is the file? The file is located right here, which is in the temp TMP name. So the file is located here temporarily. So we'll pick it from that area. So that's our image object, our image array. Then we access the temporal name and then we move it to the folder here. And that should be fine. So if this goes well, if this goes well, so if this goes well, that's if this. 
successfully normally the move upload file will return true if it goes well so we return true so we do return true else then something certainly happen and we still return false remember that's what we want to do here we just want the function to be able to move the file to the folder so we can give it a try so once that done we can now go back to our code here and check first of all that the form is completely filled so if not is no if not is no right if not is no the title the title let me try if not is no let me try if it can take this then accept variable accept then content cover image so if not is no else echo arrow something like that so let me try and see so at this point we could now check so let me add in comment here check if all fields uh, well provided simply provided so it doesn't matter whether the field was empty or some something else because based on our conditions here if these three conditions are not satisfied we get a no so if there's no no set on any of these fields so the four if there's no no set on any of them then we can go ahead and process the form so in our case, so we check the first one, which is if not is no, the title. And uh, so we add an end statement is no as well, the except. So if the except has no no value and uh, so we add again and not is no, that's the content, not is no content. And we do the same thing, which is and not and not is no the cover image here. Yes. <clears throat> so if all these fields have no no on them then we are good to go we can go ahead and start processing so the first thing i would like to do is to transfer the image uh, into our folder so we have to upload it into our folders so by the way let me take this function up here uh, somewhere right after the session and then i'll comment around the function here and say function to handle file upload all right so once we do that we can go ahead and say okay if all the fields are filled uh are well filled then let's move let's move the file move the file to our site so we can now take the file from the administrator's machine then to our website server so to do that we say okay if upload file and then remember we have to attach the image object so if if upload file and uh, we don't forget to get the file name so because we want to get a file name once that is done instead of returning true simply true here we could get the file name so by returning image here and then we return the name because we want that name so we go ahead we go back here we say okay if upload image so in our case the image value the value of the image or the array 
is inside this variable cover image so if move and we need to get the file name file name first so if we got we get a file name and then indeed successfully we uploaded the image using our upload image file, uh, function so it should return us a true here which is the actual file name if not this variable should contain a false value therefore making the if statement fail so if it actually got we got the file we can go ahead if we can't get the file so we could now set an error and say something really happened and here the error will set is um, let's say we'll call it error so what we need to think of how to handle the errors here uh, what i'm thinking of doing is to have the errors are reset somewhere here so let's say errors array so name it errors and we assign it an empty array like this so if there's any eventual error we like to log then we'll log it in so i'll now add the errors array and give it an index so or i will simply leave it empty like this and then allow php to give it an automatic index which is an automatic number for the index so error and then should be error uploading image or cover image cover image so once that error set we should have we should handle it somewhere in our code here in our html page to display that error so we need to also handle in case any of these variables returns a null if there's an error with this variable so we could also return by saying else here so else we assign we are uh, we enter inside the errors variable the value of all the fields are required so all the fields are required so it means definitely there was an error with one of the fields so it's up to the user to check what field or was actually messing up or was actually not well filled something like that so once that done we can go ahead now we've handled these conditions if now the file was successfully uploaded then we can go ahead and continue the processing so before we continue processing let's handle these errors the display of the errors so i would like us to come here uh i would like the errors to be displaying right under the create new post so we go inside the form in our html tag here so i would like the errors to exist here so i will open a php section and say if first of all is set the variable errors right and uh, the variable errors the count of element in the variable errors is strictly strictly greater than zero so if at least if you have at least an error that's when we can display the errors so we now close the php here sorry we open the php here php then we close the if statement end if statement so once we end the if statement we need to also go through the errors and display them since this variable is an array so it might have more than one errors and then we we'll have to go through these errors one by one so we go ahead we open another loop so php for each of the errors for each of the errors as a unique error then we also open the shorthand like that and then we come and close the shorthand somewhere here with end for inch and for inch here so then in between here we can go ahead and then display an html element li because we want the list elements and then inside the list element we can go ahead now and echo 
the error so we use the echo shorthand and echo the error so that will bring the errors on next lines so i will leave the form empty like this and then try to submit and see what we have and here it is so we have one error which is which says all the fields are required so we can go ahead again now continue with the process so here we have shown that if there's any error we display the error so at this point if there's no error what do we do next so we can bring our database connection at this point because we would like to now post the data since we have collected the data we have done the little check-in we want to check and everything seems to be okay then we can think about saving the data into the database so uh so save data in database so before we save data in a database we need to require the connection to get database connection so our database connection is db connection which is uh, available in the function so we do require once and it is located inside the db connection file db underscore connection dot php so it's this underscore so we do semicolon so once we it require this file we should now have a db connection object available to help us to now make queries in our database so once we have that we can prepare a statement so um save post as a statement is db connection prepare the statement and say insert into articles that's the name of our table and which fields do we want to affect so we want to affect if we check our database again so we want to affect the title so title sorry except content author yes we want to affect the author do we have the author field in the form we don't have the author field so we really have to add that so because here we are expecting to enter the author's name in plain so it means let's finish with this so we'll take the author admin id we need to also provide that and we don't forget that the admin id is supposed to be an integer just like the id here admin id is big int So we need to provide the admin published on since it is not automatic then we'll have to provide it so we need this field so let me break it to the next line like this so bring this end of statement here like this so we need to affect this field we provide we need to affect the title we need to affect the except so except is just one so after the except we have content so except content author admin so on so and i said we need before we continue we need to enter the author's title uh, author's form field so uh, that should be somewhere in the form here we use an input of type so we let's say we place it somewhere at the bottom here 
So author's name. Author's name. So and here the name, the ID should be author. And here the user should be able to write anything they want, like John Doe. So if we reload the form, so no need to submit. Let me just reload the form. So we are having an error which is db connection the php 64. So syntax error unexpected db connection the php. Let's check that what do we have there. The error is saying here require once. Yes, once. Yes, so uh, once we have the field added, so we can continue. So we are going to affect these various fields on the table and the values we want to assign to this field. So here we have to be very careful. Uh, with PDO prepared statement, we have to add semicolon uh, question marks for the values. And the number of question marks must match the same number of fields we are going to affect. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven fields. So we have to have seven question marks. That's four, five, six, seven. So always go ahead, count them to be sure of the number. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So once you come down like that, you are sure of it. So the statement is prepared. Now we need to execute it. Remember, since we are executing a statement that has variables, which is the question marks, it means we need to provide values for these particular variables. So we are going to say statement execute. Execute. So once we say execute, we have to provide an array which will now contain the exact values we want to provide for the title, the accept, and so on, in this same order. So the first thing is the title. The second thing is the accept. The third thing is the content. So content. The fourth thing is the author. And since we don't have the authors variable yet, this is the time to create it. So it's just like the title input uh, field so we just copy the same thing let me place it right here so this is going to be author author like this so that's the same thing we give to the input in the form so if we check the form well we should have the same name here all right so once that done that's the variable we are now going to assign to this field and then the next thing is the admin id so the admin id that is very important that's the actual admin who is who is signing and trying to post this article and that admin id is available in our session if we remember this variable session log logged in admin contains an array which has all the information about that admin so if we use that variable so session logged in admin and it is an object then we access the id like that so if you want to see it clearly we could you could echo it or var dump this variable and see what is inside so once we have the admin id the next thing is to have the cover image the cover image remember if the upload goes successfully by this time the file is already deposited in our servers folder which is the images folder here then we can the file name is returned inside this variable called file name so to get the cover image we in name we use file name and then the last one which is published on the date on which it is supposed to be published so uh this one we'll have to create a date for it so let's say published published on so we'll create a variable called published on so we are going to get that variable created up here so uh, let's see i will create the variable right here or oh, let me make it here so published on that variable is going to be a date type and then since it is in the, the database formats the date in this format let me look at it so we can see we have year month and day so we have to respect that format so we have year month and day so that's the same format we need to have so in normal situation we could have had 
an input here which allows the user to pick a date the date on which the article will be published so for now we'll manually set it to the actual date the current date so and that's the value and that's the last question marks value so once that's done normally we could also pdo will return a, a, a value once this goes on either successfully or not if it goes successfully successfully we'll get a true value returned otherwise it will give us an error and we could access that error so what i want to do is we will say okay post it or let's say save saved post so saved post equals to so i want to re to get whatever pdo returns inside this variable so i will don't forget the question mark so once that's done i would like to check if that was successful so if it was successful it will be a true variable if it was successful this will be true so if true then something it went through successfully otherwise there, there was an error so we'll go ahead and they will now handle the error we add a, a value to the error array by saying an error occurred when saving new post or new article like this so if there was no error then here we can have another variable we'll call success and that variable won't be an array it only happens once and it will contain new post article saved success fully so with a question mark of joy uh, exclamation mark of joy <laughs> sorry question mark of joy oh man so with an exclamation mark of joy to say yes the article was successfully saved so of course we need to also handle the display of that confirmation message so by coming back here to make the same checking so here i would like to add um, a kind of you see a url a url since we are using li's i didn't want that but because i want to have some star so i'll go ahead and say star uh first thing is padding i will eliminate it margin i will eliminate it and then i could say color red so i want everything here to be in red and also um the background color should we affect it so let's keep it like that so if i submit i should get a red text so i should get a text that says yeah this is an error so i would like to do the same thing for our success error uh, message so first thing is to here we are checking if the variable exists and then so on so we do that yeah so if the variable success exists success if it's set variable success we don't count because it's just a plain variable so if that variable exists instead of uh, a ul here we'll use just a div or even a paragraph and close that paragraph somewhere and we'll end the if of course without forgetting that so once the if ended we have our error we can now echo it our success sorry not error so we have a success variable to display here so this one shouldn't be red rather right let me use lime green exactly so it will be shiny so also this let me add some padding here because padding let me add one rem and maybe give it a margin bottom margin bottom of one yes so let me reload and see great so that gives it this space so let me use the same thing here margin padding and so on margin padding except the color so if everything goes well we should have a successful message so let me give you the test first test article let me pick it except 
then I'll pick an image. So in our case, let me if I pick one of these images, uh normally if it goes through successfully, this image should be overwritten because we are using the same image, we are bringing it on the, the same in the same folder where it is. So basically it will try to overwrite the existing image because we did not change the image name in our code. So what I will do is I'll try to pick images somewhere else inside images like this so let me pick something like this okay so next uh let me enter the text full content goes here so i'll copy this several times something like that then the author is john l uh, john little do something like that and then save the article so error uploading cover image so that's the error we got error uploading cover image so let's go and check the code where that error is emitted so error let's check the upload function so upload function returns false if there was an error so we need to debug that function and see where the error is happening so if it is here let's see what happens so this is one of the reasons why we really have to you might need to go through uh, this function and detail every single aspect you need to handle every single aspect in a more serious project so uh, let's say if it is here if it is during the uh, transport or let's say during moving the image we have the issue we should have that a message echoed here for example so this is how you debug it so let me reload and see i should try to resubmit the same data and i'm getting this error without the here message so you can't see it anywhere so basically it is not here so if i go here and try to submit again so no here message so let's go ahead uh, I might be doing it wrong here because normally when I echo this it means okay that I, I, do, I did it right so that's it so we have the here message which says that okay this is the condition that doesn't work so if you go through we are checking this day. so there must be an error with this image error here uh, this condition is failing so why is it failing let's check it out so let assume I don't do the type checking I just check like this and I upload again and I still get the same error so now let me echo here echo this variable and then I will do die to stop the script. Re-upload. Check. So I'm getting zero. So let me do var dump rather to see what I have. So when I var dump that like this, I'm getting an integer of zero. So why is it not checking this as an integer? So if not so this is the, the issue I'm having. I'm noting this. So by noting this, it means I'm changing this type. So to be sure of what I'm saying, let me show you. So basically, if this image error came in as zero, by adding the question, the exclamation mark in front, it should be changed into one. So if I do this and check, you see, it becomes true. So I'm actually saying, Anytime it is, is, is false, change it into true and then compare it to this one and it will always be false. So this shouldn't be this. It should be if it is equals to zero, that's it is true and there was no error, then we can proceed. Otherwise, then we can emit any error. I think that, that is good. So you are discovering a lot through this exercise. So we resubmit the form again. So we are getting a different error now, which says, okay, move upload file. The second argument to copy function cannot be a directory. 17, unable to move so, so, so far to images. 
so uh let me see if let assume i'm trying to add a forward slash here just run that same error but if i add it here we are located here we are just going to fold us image yes that makes sense so let me do dot in the same location the root folder and go ahead okay so now let me pay attention to the error and it says move upload file the second argument to copy function cannot be a directory this surprising cannot be a directory and it's line 17 okay so we said if move to so if i check the prototype of the function so if i do move move uploaded file file name and destination which is supposed to be a directory this makes sense okay so this is actually the the, uh, the format so the error here is that not only i have to specify the folder but i also need to append the file name because basically i need to provide uh the complete uh path to the image so i have to concatenate that with that like this so we concatenate the folder and then the file name so the full file name uh path so let's give it a try again and see so it, tell, it tells me again that move upload file so 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 temporal so we're getting the same error so basically here the problem is that not only i'm getting the file um the file name here so the thing is let, i need to specify the comp the full file name including the extension so at this point i don't have the extension so what i can do is that i can get the extension from this image type here because remember the image type is going to be in this format so i can try to get uh get far extension so to get a far extension i will say name tokens or let's say extension tokens so we could say extension tokens equals to explode we explode the extension so delimiter the delimiter here is forward slash we can see that it's this part of the extension as delimited by the forward slash symbol and the string is the image type so once we have that token uh it should give us an array so this should give us an array like this every time we take the file extension we'll have the first element image and the second element is going to be png if the image is png so it means we could get the extension token by uh, we can get the extension by simply accessing the element of index one right element of index one so we have to concatenate that here so extension token the element with index one that's this guy here if it is a png then it is going to be png if it is a jpeg it is going to be jpeg so that will give us the full file name so uh, i have to warn you this is really not the best practice to do because imagine if there was an error here and this file retains something crazy so this variable is going to be unset so it wouldn't exist so it would be great to really do a lot of checking and instead of getting the extension like this we could also get it by just passing the file name itself and so many other tricks you can use so when it comes to the file upload you really have to be careful go and read a lot about uploading files with php to avoid uh being hacked through that form so we have to check that this is just for demonstration purposes so once we have that we should be able to test again by resubmitting our form so we said we are getting okay the upload failed and then uh, same thing so here is telling me it is uh, temp so you can see 
the file it is trying to upload is the file so so the temporal extension plus the jpeg so here you can see it's sticking them together so it means we might need to add a full stop so not only will concatenate that will concatenate with the string of dot which is the dot we see before the extension this so we can try to resubmit and see so we're getting the same thing okay so i noticed the problem was the the name so here is the actual temporal name and i was trying to use that temporal name in the file name so basically this name here is like the name the file is going to have once it is it is deposited on the folder so we can set that name here uh this is an opportunity for us to change the name so we could say uh news underscore so micro time so it will generate a random number here and we base on the time at uh, at which the article is being created so um by doing that then the article was the image was uploaded and if you check in our folder and that's here good images so we should see the image image was uploaded here and you can see the micro time showing up here okay so let me delete for now because we are having an error here which says and uh, an error occurred when saving new uh, new article so this error is happening here here so it means the post was not saved and to prove that we can check in our database by reloading so we can see there's no new post added so if we check to see what happened so we are saying insert into articles is that the name of our uh, table yes we are sure to be sure we copy the name here we we'll paste it as exactly state so we need to check the title the various fields if they are okay so we have title except so they were all copied content then we have author which is a vaca so we have admin id which is an, an integer and we have cover which is supposed to be a vaca as well published on which is supposed to be a date so <clears throat> what went wrong so if we check we have title we have accept we have content we have author then admin logged in id so file name so the file name we said will be returned okay so that one is a challenge the file name is going to be returned so in our case here when if we look at our function again here we are not retaining that file name rather as a because we are actually sending a file which is here and that's a new the file new name and we are retaining the actual old name so that is no good so we have to get all this out of here and let me do this so we we'll say file new name hey. file new name is equals to so we add a string like this new news underscore micro time then full stop then the extension so it is that file new name we are going to return and it's that same new name we are going to append to the destination folder so now we are sure we are getting the actual file name once it is uploaded and find out what happened <laughs> so we could also try to catch the pdo exception remember when we were setting our pdo connection we added that we want to handle the uh, pdo errors through exceptions so by default when we try to execute this if there was an error pdo would tell us we will emit an exception so we can try that by saying try putting it in true try catch try catch and then we want to get pdo exceptions we want to try to do the execution of 
want to execute this at, uh, statement so if there was an error we would like to get that error here so this if saved is not necessary so it's not necessary so we we'll get rid of all this it's not necessary here so if there's an error that's where we we'll emit the error so if the saving happened successfully good so we can already create the success if, uh, variable and display it so otherwise we'll have an exception here and that will be something like we we'll concatenate it by saying exception get message like this so if we try we'll get the image uploaded and we have new article saved successfully so basically uh we solved the problem uh without realizing so that's great so if you check now we have our image so you can see the image name here so it's a lot of things with uh, a lot of things with numbers but we still have the news here then if we check the articles table we reload it we should see something nothing happens so let me try to reload from a different table come back to articles and data so it still tells me nothing happened so yes so yes uh, actually this is uh, the statement try catch statement to win successfully but this saved post is still not true because there it wasn't saved so it means we still need to check if saved post successful so if saved post is good we can now create that confirmation so uh, in our case let's try to find out what actually is inside that it wasn't uh, a pdo and error uh, exception emitted so let's see what actually happened there so over dump that and see and i'll even die it here so i'll try to upload so we are going to get another image sent to our folder so it says false okay so um open checking i realized that these fields here shouldn't have uh the quotes so let me eliminate the quotes so if we eliminate the quotes so we should have only the the fields name so basically the quotes were making it look like the fields were not the actual fields so let me remove this to be sure of what we are doing yeah, let me just comment it then resubmit the form news article saved so if that happened it means this saved post was success was positive it is true so it means this statement was also true so if you check our table we should have a new article saved and you can see the articles image here so that's image so so ending with 700 although we have many the image uploaded several times but the one with 700 is the actual image that's it here this one all right so that being said if we now head over to our site from the front site we should have a new article added and this is it so here we can see we are now still meeting small challenges with our data uh, our design so at least this shows a little bit how to go about uh, entering new posts so i'll go ahead add some few more posts to the system and eliminate this testing post and then we will now come back to how to manage these posts from the administration so i'll go back to the admin content here so how we are going to manage the content through this page now so that was it with adding a new post through our post form so thank you for watching again if you enjoyed watching this episode kindly leave a comment like the video or other videos in the series and please help us by sharing this post thank you